There we go. That is much neater. Be sure to stay tuned. You just heard Ben Barrow with Serafina. Their lead single from their... Okay, so it's only print buddy, not print buddy, print run. Uh, that ha includes prawn interface, and we have connection to the printer. So, yes, um, milestone achieved. Homing X. That seems to work. Homing Y. That seems to work. And homing Z. First of all, let's bring that up a bit. Oh. Huh. I don't know if you could see that, but it sort of tilted as it was going up. I wonder if I have to check my alignment. Oh, yeah. There's a gap in there that's pushing it. Yeah, you can see that when it pushes down, it doesn't actually move this down. Um, I wonder if I need a second nut in here and I just didn't build it properly. I don't think that there needed to be a second nut, but usually when you have <clears throat> an anti-backlash mechanism, you have a nut on either end with a spring in between them. And so in both up and down directions, you've got bearing surface against the, um, the rigid piece that you're trying to move. So um, imagine pulling a nut up. You're not going to have any motion there. And pushing a nut down onto here, you're not going to have any motion there. And then the spring basically keeps those, the upward nut and the downward nut pressed against the lower and the upper part of your ramp that this screw is making. So I, I think I might have built this wrong. Hmm. I don't remember seeing that in the instructions. Anyways. Okay, so I couldn't get it working with Pronter Face for some reason. I couldn't get the uh, heated the bed to heat up or something like that. So it's either a problem with um, Pronter Face or it was a problem with uh, communications with the board. But using Repetier, um, I am able to um, control the printer and I've set up the geometry for a 200-280 bed or 200 280 build volume, and it heats the bed up. And now I'm just testing the extruder to make sure that it can extrude. And we've got, I don't know if you can see it in there, but it's just about ready to come schmooing out of there, I think. Oh, we'll see. Oh, look at that. It oozes. I wouldn't exactly say that that is a super clean exiting from the nozzle, but we will um, give that a thumbs up for now. Let's heat up the bed, put down some uh, some tape, and see if we can actually print on it. Well, that could have gone better. It's a little better. But then the extruder stopped turning. So this got jammed um, somewhere up here. So I have to take a look at what's going on up there and it stopped printing a few layers and then when I s wiggled the extruder it started going again so yeah there's still some work to do and that is why we were getting we got the skip there's a crack in that inner pulley and it was uh, jamming so in the process of printing another one okay so that's the one that most recently failed and this was one that whoops and this is one that was just sitting in the, the packaging, but they are so old 
that the uh, material has just cracked from age. So, um, like I said, this, as you know, these printers have been around for probably, what, six years? 2013 is, I think, when the Mendel came out. Um, so, yeah, um, PLA has a, uh, PLA ages, which I'm imagining that's what these, these parts are. Not 100% sure. Um, I could probably get some temperature adjustable, get a soldering iron, a, a, a temperature adjust soldering iron out and figure out what the uh, melting temperature is, but, you know, it doesn't matter to I'm just going to print up some new ones and leave it at that. Anyways, um, so close, yet so far. Okay, so I have another one of these um, pinions. I'm going to um, pop one of those on just to see if um, it runs smoother and doesn't break and while the other ones are printing. Seems to be working. It's much quieter than the uh, reality. I see what people mean about the, uh, the noise on the reality. It is quite a bit louder than, uh, than this printer, that's for sure. And that's just using the, um, the melty board. Hmm. Anyways, yeah. I'll let that finish and then we'll take a look at the result. So 19.83 millimeters high. Wow, that's pretty close. And 20.11. 06. 005. Wow. X and Y are uh, pretty much dead on. It's just height that I have to calibrate. Huh. Not too shabby. So that's the Creality Ender 3 printing a gear that's well, maybe three millimeters in height, maybe four. And that's the mating piece, that's the inside. I mean, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to assemble an extruder out of these pieces, um, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. So taking a tw 25 64 uh, drill bit and just cleaning that hole out allowed me to drop that bearing in very smoothly. Okay, now to get the rest of the assembly together. Needed to expand this a bit with just a little simple carving and then bearing um, washer and nut and then that gives this the ability to spin freely but with a constrained center. Check to make sure that the knurlings are those are visible through that slot. And I think I might want to clean this up a bit but uh, you know you can see it through there. But yeah I need, need to clean this because another bearing sits in here and that's the pinch roller so that the 
filament goes in through that hole, is pinched between these two and is ejected through the Bowden tube on this side. Feels pretty good actually. It stiffens up here. Still, that's not bad. It's a nice mechanism. Looks pretty good with three extruders. So I need a third, um, so three hot ends, and one back there, and I need to get two, uh, one more extruder mounted, another extruder built and mounted. Whoops, I kind of overlapped a couple of models. So the Mendel seems to be printing um, fairly well, I'd have to say. Uh, it looks pretty nice. At least it's capable of printing things for itself. This is going to be a fan that I'm going to mount on the back of the extruder, of uh, the x-axis there, uh, fan holder, and then it will have um, at least one uh, part cooling fan. I'm not exactly sure how to get three part cooling fans on there, but um, Let's just uh, figure out how to get one part cooler on there to begin with and maybe we can adjust the, um, the nozzle to uh, actually direct it at all three print heads simultaneously. Okay, so that part cooling looks like it's doing all right. So here's where I ended up paying for using the original pinion in the, um, in the drive. It uh, did the same thing. It stopped printing after a few, after some layers. Arr. But it does seem to be printing not too badly. Um, now that I got the uh, replacement gear in there. So, yeah. It um, is now on to trying to figure out how to get multi-materials working with this thing. And that will be a future video. And as always, thanks for watching, and talk to you later. Bye for now.